Hi, I'm Ron Spromberg, co-founder and CEO of Hi Mama. Welcome to our podcast about all things early childhood education. <laughs> On episode 43 of the show, we talk about nurturing growth mindsets at an early years level with Pam Rin, Program Director for Community Professional Development Instruction at Campfire First Texas. We learn about the Thrivology Framework, which is a research-based measurable approach to learning and development that emphasizes a balance between work, health, and love. Pam shows us how the approach inspires learning in a safe environment that allows children to take risks while developing the skills that they need to achieve their goals. All this builds a foundation for creative thinking and problem solving at an early age. If you are an educator who loves holistic teaching, then stay tuned to this episode of the Preschool Podcast. Pam, welcome to the Preschool Podcast. Great to have you on the show. Thank you, Ron. It's great to be here. So Pam, you've been with Campfire First for a number of years. Let me start with this question. Why does Campfire exist as an organization? Well, I've been here over 13 years, and the main thing that drew me to Campfire is its definite commitment to child and youth development. That hasn't changed over their 100-year history. Um, that is that is the main reason that Campfire exists, is to provide um, nurturing, fun, constructive environments for youth to discover who they are, what their sparks are, how they can be contributing members to society when they grow grow up. So a lot of these things, and in particular child and youth development, is something you could do at any child care or early learning program. How do you see Campfire First as being maybe different from a you know, quote-unquote traditional child care program? Well, our First Texas Council is pretty unique because we have an early childhood division that does a lot of professional development out in the community. In addition to having a child development demonstration school here on site, so there are lots of opportunities that we can provide for the community to get up-to-date information, uh, useful things that they can put into play in their classroom. Uh, There is also a school readiness program where skilled mentors go out into the community child care facilities and work directly side by side, elbow to elbow with the teachers and directors to provide those good nurturing environments for young children and youth. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. So you're involved not only in your own programs, but also in other programs in the community providing ideas and direction and any professional learning and advice that you can to other organizations and programs. Yes, absolutely. And we we tailor make the professional development to meet the needs uh, that are reflected in the community. We do lots of evaluation. We do lots of data collection. So we make sure that we're on the cutting edge of what the community needs. And we also take uh, skilled specialists, if you will, um, out into the community to do on-site training at facilities that might be farther afield than than the home office here. Very cool. Now, another thing that's very unique about Campfire First is how long the organization has been around, which is over a hundred years, which especially in the context of us over here in the new world is a really long time. <laughs> that is a long time. Yeah, we were fortunate enough uh, to to be on the cutting edge back in the early 1900s. There, there were was the Gulick. Dr. Gulick started Campfire, and our council came along a couple of years after that. After 1912, in 2014, First Texas. Campfire celebrated its 100th anniversary. So it has been around a long time, but its foundational principles have remained the same. It's all about teaching good quality skills for youth of all genders, all races, all ethnicities, making sure that they have the skills that they need to be productive people in society. Um, 
I, I actually was on your website and I was poking around a little bit. And one thing that really jumped out to me was um, the goal. And I just want to read it just uh, to kind of hit the point home. So um, I copied it here. It says, our goal is to provide youth with opportunities to cultivate their inner passions, skills, and attributes, or, or sparks, as you call them, to stimulate thriving, a forward purposeful motion toward achieving one's full potential. I think that's so powerful, especially when you use um, the words that you do, like sparking um, and stimulating uh, children to be thriving. How do you uh, do these things at Campfire First Texas? Is there certain methods you use or um, certain uh, programs that you have in place to achieve this goal? Well, I think the, the Thrivology concept, and we work with the Thrive Foundation for Youth um, to come, apart, come up with this methodology. And the first thing that we identify in, in all of our programs, you know, so this is integrated throughout everything that Camp Fire First Texas does. So the first thing is identifying the individual sparks. Um, those are the, the gifts, the talents, the things that really get children and youth going. It doesn't necessarily mean that this is what they're going to be for the rest of their life, you know, for their career. But at this point in time, this is what gets me going. So a lot of a lot of children really get when you ask, what is your spark? What do you like to do? They can name it real quick like. Hmm. But where the the foundational follow up piece with that spark is you have to provide them opportunity. You have to name that spark, name it back to them. Let them know that you notice that spark about them and have two or three caring adults support that spark. Say, hey, I've named it, you're claiming it, let's go out and practice that. So research has shown that if you have some spark champions, if you will, in the life of a, a child or a youth, they are more likely to succeed and have good outcomes later on in life. So that's kind of the first part of the, the Thrivology principles. And then, you know, you've got the growth mindset, like you said, uh, making sure that you are forward thinking, you have um, hope and you have joy in your life. And then setting, teaching the, the youth and children to, to set goals, to be forward thinking, to say, okay, so what do I want to be? What do I want to do? I have that, that big dream in mind. So let's go back and check out the steps so that I can get there. So that's that goal management. And then part of everything else that, that we work with the children and the youth and the adults that work with them is to do that reflection piece. And I think that's what makes Camp Fire First Texas really, really unique is that intentional focus on having the youth reflect back. So how did that go? How, how was that project that you did in your after school program? Did it work out the way you wanted to? And if not, why not? And then what can we do better in future to make it turn out a little bit better and more like what you wanted? So I think that's the unique part of what we do with the mentorship in all of our Camp Fire programs. So I think one of the things that I find really cool about this methodology and approach that you take is it seems to me like it's it's very intuitive and I can immediately get how it makes a lot of sense and it's simple and it's easy to understand and it's easy to explain. Um, and I know, you know, especially spending time in the world of early childhood education, as much as we love research and science and all the reports and literature that go with that, sometimes we can have the risk of getting sort of stuck in the weeds. Um, and so I guess the question yeah. for you is, um, has this sort of evolved over time to come to this um, framework where you're at now that's sort of this intuitive and simple to understand? Well, I think it's probably been, yeah, I think, I think it's been an evolution. I think people intuitively say, okay, I'm going to work with children and youth. I'm going to um, make sure that I'm shaping the future generation. And we hear all that. But one of the main things that has really evolved is that intentionality, 
we really focus on these four elements in all of our programs. And that falls right in line with the the campfire, um, just that that main, those three main core areas that we want to focus on, which is work, health, and love. Um, the, those of you who are, are campfire alumni probably have heard of Wohilo, and that's our campfire byword, but it stands for work, health, and love. So when we focus on those three elements, this idea of identifying sparks and growth mindset, goal management and reflection, it just falls right into those three categories. And it, it's a perfect fit. Hmm. I know one of the specific pieces that jumps out to me a little bit here, you touched on it quickly, is goal management. Um, I don't hear that coming up too often in early childhood education. And it, usually it seems like it's the educator who kind of sets and manages the goals. Uh, do you have the children get involved in setting their own goals or being involved in the process? It almost seems like that, uh, the way that uh, you phrased it. Well, the, the goal management, and, and yes, we do want the youth to be involved because ideally, the, really the goal of teachers and, and mentors and coaches is really to work ourselves out of a job. We want to make sure that we do a good enough job of, of imparting these skills, letting those skills evolve and develop so that the child and the youth can later on do it themselves. It's called, you know, like a gradual release method where you, you walk alongside them, you practice it, you let them do it, you're there to help, but then ultimately they're going to be able to do that themselves. So letting them know that it's okay to have goals and what kind of steps you need to take to have that outcome instead of depending on, you know, the hope to gosh method you know, gosh, I hope to gosh it works out today. Um, so giving them that opportunity to really do a little bit of thinking and planning what they have for their day. Um, for example, in some of our, our elementary programs, our after-school programs, that's an integral part of, of the planning the curriculum is what are you guys into? What's, what's your spark? Yes, there are some goals and some strategies that that the adult leaders have in place for them. But the method of, of attaining those skills, that's a little bit variable based on the population you're working with. And so far as early childhood goes, we know that that's actually the end run. That's beginning with the end in mind. So what do we have to do as early childhood educators to put in place this higher level thinking, this problem solving, um, you can do this. I'm here to help you support you. And also the, that social emotional competency that is so important in our early childhood programs. That feeling that I'm safe. So because I'm safe here, emotionally safe, physically safe, I can kind of step out and take some risks while I'm doing these, these skill building activities in this safe environment. Mm. And actually, that's uh, maybe a good segue to talk a little bit more about the three social impact areas that you mentioned, work, health, and love. Can you tell us, you know, why you have that in place and what that means? Well, these have been the three foundational areas for Campfire National, Campfire First Texas, everything since the very beginning. Hmm. So the byword, like I said, was Wohilo, so work encourages that, that sense of volunteerism, putting yourself back into the community, uh, being productive citizens. Mm -hmm. The health part, we want to focus on the whole child, the whole adolescent, the whole individual leading a session. We want to make sure that we're being mindful of the physical and the cognitive and the social emotional health of everybody that we work with. And love is, is really, in our world, it's fostering the love of the outdoors, making sure you're good stewards, making sure you get out in the physical world, make sure that you're exploring the wonders of nature, because that just feeds your spirit. Very cool, very cool. Again, I like uh, how you've broken down what are oftentimes very complex subjects um, into a very cool 
framework of these three social impact areas. And it just goes to show that, you know, even over a long period of time, over a hundred years even, these things stay true um, in an early childhood education environment. Uh, Pam, this has been a really interesting conversation about Campfire Texas. Uh, I learned a lot about uh, a very neat program that you're doing there, and I, especially because you're involved in things that are happening in the community around you there. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about where people would go to learn more about the Campfire First Texas programs? Well, you mentioned earlier you went to our website. So we, we're in touch with social media all over the place. So you can look up campfirefw.org for our campfire website, and there you'll find um, a blog site. You'll find our connection to our Facebook, Twitter, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest pages on there. So yes, you can you can Google campfire FW, or if you want a broader view of campfire in general, you can just do campfire, and you'll get hooked up with the national council. Awesome. Pam, you're doing some great work there at Campfire First Texas. I would definitely encourage all of our listeners to check out the website to get some inspiration in terms of how early childhood education is being approached through these programs. Thank you so much for coming on the show today, Pam. Thank you, Ron, for inviting me. It's been a pleasure. What's your name? Michaela. Michaela, how are you? Hi. You having fun playing? Yeah. It's a nice day, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. What's your favorite thing to play out here? Playing monsters. You like to play monsters? Do you like to swing? Okay. What else do you like to do? Play my Dora bike. Oh, with your Dora bike? Oh, okay. Do you ride fast? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay.